Hi, everybody. Well, it's the final day of April coming to you in the uh, five o'clock hour on this April 30th. I'm meteorologist Rod Hill from the Portland, Vancouver area. Um, and I thought since tomorrow's May 1st, I would get my summer outlook completed. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar with my outlook work, which I've been doing for coming up on about 20 solid years now, um, I, I try to localize it and look at more data and try to pinpoint much more so than you get when you look at um, the National Weather Service or NOAA and they show you the big map and you're either above normal or below normal or normal. For example, my winter outlook this past season, we correctly said it would be a really mild December. We correctly said that partially because of that, we would have a very slow start to, start to the snowpack and skiing and boarding season up on Mount Hood. We correctly said there would be more ice, sleet, or freezing rain this winter in Portland than snow. All correct points. And I will tell you that the Mount Hood snowpack season is now ending at about midnight tonight. My projection for the complete season wrapping up April 30th was 74% of normal snowpack. It looks like it's going to end up slightly over 80%. So not exactly correct, but a pretty good uh, summation of the snowpack season that we had. So I didn't do a summer outlook at all for a number of years. In the last couple of years, I've started to look at more and more data. I've looked at more data this time around over the past couple of weeks than I ever have before. But to me, when it comes to the summer outlook, um, which I didn't used to do, but hitting 90 degree temperatures has become such a topic with our warming summers, and they have been warming, that that's pretty much what I focus on. I mean, the bottom line is the difference between a wet summer precip wise and a uh, dry summer for us is not that great. We just don't get that much summer precip period ever, right? So the big question is, how many times are we going to hit 90? Is it going to be a summer sizzler or is it going to be a summer that is certainly a little bit more comfortable? So that's what this is going to focus on. How many 90 degree days hot or not? Okay. Now, before we get into the data, I'm very proud to announce Momentous Wealth Podcast as a sponsor of my YouTube channel. This is uh, Todd Pisarczyk's team. He is the owner of Momentous, um, of Momentous Wealth Management. That company's up in Vancouver, but he's licensed in both Oregon and Washington. Todd's, um, pardon me, Todd's um, podcast uh, focus on a number of uh, complex financial topics. He delivers actionable insights and evidence-based strategies, but most importantly, Todd is a guy that you can just have a conversation with and he'll break it down. He'll answer all your questions. I've worked with him for years on my 401k, basically from work, like a lot of you have. And I really recommend Todd Pasarczyk and his team at Momentous Wealth Management. You can link on my weather site to his company or there's this podcast available in Apple and Spotify. Okay. Are you ready? Let's get going. So I want to just talk about 90 degree temperatures and the trend that we've seen going back to the year 2000. It doesn't make sense to look beyond 2000 farther back because our summers are definitely undeniable getting, undeniably getting warmer. I mean, they just are. This is information that's site-specific to PDX, okay? So we hit 90s typically somewhere starting in May, not typically, not every year, but we can in May, and we can do it as late as September. So what this shows you are the number of 90 degree days from 2000 through 2003. If you go back to the year 2000, we only had five 90 degree days. That's hard to even fathom right now, right? And then if you go to the last several summers, 2021, we had uh, 23, 24, 90 degree days. 2022, we had about 28, 29, 90 degree days. Didn't have as many, but we had more than 25 last year. So if you put the, the lines on this to kind of help you see what the trends are, here they are. This lower line kind of connects some of the more average to low number 90 degree days. But even that is on a projection or a trajectory that's definitely going up, right? If you look at some of the more active, higher number of 90 degree days and you put a line on it, you start in 2002 with about 12 and then you just keep going up to where the averages are getting clearly above 20. And to me, that's the big story. I think, especially with the last three years being hot, in my mind as a forecaster, I'm like, well, a hot summer is now 90 degrees, 20. A hot summer is now 20, 90 degree days or more for Portland. And a more bearable, manageable summer 
is less than 20 degrees. So we'll see. Sorry about my voice. It was cracking and doing this yesterday too. Again, I don't know if it's allergies or what's going on. So what are the averages? Well, if you go back to 1971 to 2000, the National Weather Service, at the start of each decade, they averaged the past 30 years, and that's what's called the, the current norm, okay? So the normal number of, of 90 degree days in any given summer from 71 to 2000 was 13. Doesn't that sound nice? From 81 to 2010, the average actually went down, went down to 11. And then 91 to 2020, it's come back up. And this is the working average that we are dealing with officially now in Portland. But to me, things really started to change 2000 forward. So if you go the last 20 years, I know this is not a 30 year data set, so it's not exactly apples and apples, but the last 20 years, 2001 to 2020, the average jumps up to 16. And I think you'll agree with me, that seems to be more reasonable kind of where we're at. And in fact, if you look at just the last 10 years, which have had a number of hot summers, the average skyrockets to 22 90 degree days. Now, if you look at just 20 years and you look at the number of 100 degree days, the average is 1.4, one and a half. And if you look at just the last 10 years, that average, that's a pretty impressive jump, uh, 2.5, or you could average it up to three 100 degree days. So that's all interesting information. Now, what about 100 degree days? Um, you know, of course, we made news with the heat wave in June of 2021. Since 2000, this shows you all summers with 100 degree days. Now, notice not all summers have had a 100 degree day. And in fact, a number of them have not. Now, the last summer that we did not hit 100 degrees here in Portland was 2019. So we reeled off two 100 degree days in 2020. We reeled off five in 2021. And that was a the most we've ever had in 2022. We equaled that with five. And then last year we had four. So again, the last three summers really show up here as being pretty hot, right? Okay. So one thing we look at when it comes to especially winter outlook forecasting is what they call the inso cycle. And that's what we're talking about when we say it's La Nina, it's El Nino, it's neutral. So you may remember we're coming off of an El Nino winter, right? Well, this summer, we're now transitioning out of that. We're expected to be fully out of El Nino either this coming month of May or no later than the month of June, and then pretty rapidly transition back into a La Nina somewhere in July or at the latest in the month of August. So what does that mean? Well, for summer forecasting, if you go back since 2000, La Nina summers have averaged 14, 90 degree days. El Nino summers, actually last summer, we were coming off of La Nina, of La Nina, but by the time we got into the summer, it was El Nino. And we had a hot summer, right? El Nino's average the most heat, 21, 90 degree days if you go back to 2000. So-called neutral summers, which we're going to briefly be in, uh, average 17. But for transitioning to neutral and eventually to La Nina, you would think, well, we're going to average 14 to 17. And it gives you hope that perhaps this summer will see less than 20, 90 degree days which will be a big improvement over the last count on three hot summers that we've had, okay? So remember that benchmark, less than 20. See if we can do it. So here's what I'm, I'm looking at after everything that I've put together. And I also look at what I call pressure height correlations. I've taken what the, the average of what the models are projecting at the 500 millibar upper flow pattern averages, what we call the pressure heights, what those averages of the models are for May, June, July, and August. That's in part, and I also look at the transition into neutral into La Nina, and there are a couple other things I looked at. But I come up with the following. For the month of May, I do not expect any 90 degree temperatures in Portland. The mean temperature, however, I do expect to average one to two degrees above normal. Now, it looks like we're going to be fairly normal uh, normal to either cooler than normal the first 10 to 20 degree, uh, 20 days of the month. So kind of a cool, wet start, but a warmer, dry finish. June, I do expect some 90 degree days, one to three. Mean temperatures though, despite that, near normal. July, this was the month I have the least confidence in. So I put the question mark there to remind me to tell you that. But I do expect three to six 90 degree days, mean temperatures, one to two degrees above normal. Getting hot, but not horrifically hot. August, pretty good confidence that this time around, this will be our warmest month. Remember a couple of years ago, the warmest month was June when we had the big historic heat dome. 
Uh, so it's not always August. This time of the summer, I do believe August this year will be the hottest with six to 10 days hitting 90, a mean temperature of plus three and one to two 100 degree days. Now, two summers ago, we broke the record for the hottest August ever. And then we broke that record just last summer. So if we could just be three degrees above normal in August, that wouldn't be as hot as the last couple of Augusts. Okay. So that is overall my summer outlook of projection. And the number that I really was looking to find and pinpoint was this one. Now, if you follow my outlooks, I'm not setting out to pinpoint something specifically or just to throw a dart at a board or to come up with some number that's nice and round and juicy. I put out ranges when I think ranges are what my data supports. So my data supports at least 12 90 degree days this summer season from May into September and no more than 19. So the big headline here is under 20, which in today's world that we live in would be considered kind of normal, not really cool, not really hot. 100 degree days, I wouldn't be surprised if we don't make it. I don't think we'll have more than two. So that is a look at my summer outlook for 2024. And like you, we'll, we'll, uh, I'll sit back and I'll see how I did. I do want to real quickly, uh, so if that's all you wanted, that's a summer outlook. Now, if you're watching this on April 30th, Tuesday, April 30th, uh, stick with me for the next couple of minutes. I'm going to take you through the forecast update. Radar showing, this is what we saw yesterday, a mainly dry afternoon, nothing at the coast. We still have showers lingering. They're going to quickly start to fizzle and get out of here in the coming evening hours, okay? Um, and if you just scroll down, we didn't have any lightning detected which is cloud to ground lightning here on the west side. Maybe you heard some rumbles of thunder, but that's not detectable. We did have some cloud to ground strikes out in uh, the Columbia Basin and off to our east, but that was it. Right in here, you can see ridging coming in for tomorrow. So the rain chance is going to completely go away tonight. We'll wake up to dry weather tomorrow. The rain comes back tomorrow night. So the dry weather is not going to last terribly long. I do want to point this out. Uh, the weather advisory for the Cascades, I'll show you the Cascades in a moment, is still set to expire at 6 p.m. More snow today, not as much as yesterday. Again, I'll talk about that in a moment. This is the new headline, a frost advisory in blue. This is basically the coast range and some of the foothill drainage lowlands that come off of the coast range where temperatures could get down to freezing tonight. Wow. Now, in my forecast notes for the main Portland, Salem, Vancouver metro areas, I wrote down a range tonight of 36 degrees to 43. Uh, I do agree with this, that there could be some of those flat drainage areas like Corvallis, for example, that you get down closer to freezing. So FYI on that. And by the way, the one storm report that I had from today, 4.55 this afternoon, a report came in that Sandy was getting quarter inch hail that was starting to cover the ground. So we probably had a lot more hail episodes. That was the largest hail report that I saw issued. Here's Mount Hood, 27 right now at Timberline. They picked up seven inches of snow today, five at Meadows, five at Ski Bowl. Um, yesterday, Timberline picked up 18 inches. So yesterday, the range was eight to 18. Wow. Today, the range, let me go back up, has been more like five to seven. Still pretty good for this time of the year. And that's why the snowpack has gone from 76% of normal to about 82% of normal in just the last couple of days, literally. We're going to wrap up that snowpack tonight. Tomorrow, a dry day on the mountain, 42 degrees. Should not be any travel concerns. Icy spots up there continuing tonight over the passes. There's a government camp right now at 32 degrees. Santiam is wet, but icy spots will develop. So watch out for that in the early morning. Otherwise, the passes with dry weather tomorrow and a temperature on Mount Hood at 42 should be just absolutely fine. Here are the uh, temperatures. Been a cool day, 54 at 5 p.m. in Portland and Salem and Seattle. Uh, Seattle, yeah, dry day tomorrow, 58. Sunny on Thursday, 64. I do, there will be some rain showers tomorrow night, lingering into perhaps early Thursday morning. And then Friday, this is a, an afternoon rain chance. It comes back in. The showers stick around for the weekend. So um, I have made some significant changes to the seven-day forecast since I last talked to you. I'm going to show you Portland in a moment. But dry tomorrow during the day. This is Eugene. Thursday shower chances, but mainly dry during the day. Friday afternoon rain, Saturday showers. Okay. All right. Let's go over to Ben. 50 degrees right now. What's well, cool, right? Cool last day of April, but good grief. Tomorrow, patchy frost, 56 in the afternoon. 
Thursday, spotty shower, maybe otherwise partly sunny, generally dry in 56. Friday looks great in Central Oregon, 64. Showers on Saturday. Sunday, I'm going to tell you there could be a shower. Right now, National Weather Service is going with dry weather and 55 degrees. And then uh, over at the, the coast, there's uh, 53 tomorrow. Chance of showers late in the day. Thursday, spotty shower chance. Friday, rain comes in maybe by midday. So that, that's you look, Friday's looking more and more disappointing. Uh, I hope to by this weekend, be 61 degrees in Medford, have my forecast link fixed, and then we'll be able to start getting you into some uh, Southern Oregon forecast. Let me wrap up on uh, my seven day for Portland, courtesy of Hazeldale Tire Pros up here in uh, Clark County. Tomorrow, partly cloudy, evening showers, maybe as early as 7.30 or 8, but a nice day, 62. Showers likely Wednesday overnight, maybe a lingering shower Thursday morning. Now, Thursday goes on to carry a spotty shower chance, but during the day, mainly dry. Basically, rain that was coming in on Thursday now comes in tomorrow night, and that would leave Thursday with an approved forecast, and I have 66. Friday morning dry, clouding up, afternoon rain coming in. Remember, that was a day that looked dry and 70. Now it's looking like afternoon rain. Showers looking increasingly likely for a gray day on Saturday, but I still think 60 or better. And then Sunday potentially is pretty nice with showers holding off until later in the day. But Sunday's forecast could change again. Keep an eye on that. We're still tracking that low that drops down to our south and maybe spins some showers up our way. And then the reason I have a shower chance heightened late day Sunday, there's actually a new front coming in from the northwest. Sunday night showers. Right now, Monday shows up dry. Another front on Tuesday with a high 57. Well, I hope you enjoyed my uh, my summer outlook. I It's interesting for me to try to research that stuff and see if I can have some success in my projections. For now, I'm meteorologist Rod Hill, and I'll talk to you soon.